Hey everybody, what's up? This is Chris from T3 Handicapping and I'm bringing you the card from Indiana Grand on Tuesday, October 19th, 2021. If you want to follow my picks uh, updated on Twitter following scratches, changes, that type of thing, you know the Twitter uh, at handicapping t3 and if you want to purchase the picks uh, i have just indiana grand on tuesday but tomorrow uh, on wednesday i will have both keeneland and indiana grand if you want to purchase the picks you can head to the website there um it's two dollars a card or uh two dollars if you just want the picks sheet which i'll show you here in just a moment so um as we go here this is the pick sheet this is what that would look like so if you were to buy the pick sheet for two dollars um it would be this for any of the tracks we've handicapped on that day. Uh, so Wednesday, it would be both Keeneland and Indiana Grand, or you could purchase the individual packages, um, which include both the um, both the pick sheet like this and then the race summaries as well. So uh, you can see that overall, pretty good day picking winners at Indiana Grand today. Um, of the nine thoroughbred races, uh, we had six winners in the A column. That included some uh, decent prices here. In the ninth race, we had a thirteen sixty on $2.00. Um, and in the third race, we had an 1860 on $2. We did have a $19 winner and a $22 winner on the C line, uh, which was good for some of those horizontal plays. And in fact, if you had used um, the betting guide that's on our About the Products page, I uh, the, one of the suggestions for pick threes and pick fours and pick fives is to use an all A with C. And so um, it would have been very feasible. You could have hit the pick four um, quite easily today, both early and late. The late one paid off somewhere in the, I think, $700 range, and the early one was uh, right around $300, just a little under that. So um, certainly a lot of ways for you to be profitable here based on that. And I hope that uh, those of you that use the free code for Monday enjoyed the product and are looking forward to uh, purchasing the product on Tuesday uh, to help parlay some of that success. Now, one thing that was um, different about the track today uh, on Monday is that we were off the turf uh, because of some moisture that they had in the area. And you could really see some of those um, outside flopping moves coming from off the pace uh, leading to some to some victory. So that's something you're going to want to pay attention to how long it takes for um, things to dry out. Uh, just one other piece here to look at. You can see that uh, over in the best bet category, we had three best bets on the day. Two of them, in fact, were winners, uh, both at fairly short prices. I think Altered finished at one to nine. It was a complete um, unbettable horse, even if you really loved them, there just wasn't any value. Uh, and then Sacred Kiki Bird won the last one somewhere around three to two. Um, and then El Bohemio uh, ran a decent race, uh, but just got burned up on the front end and faded from first at the at the head of the stretch to uh, to fourth overall. So that's where we stood after today. But like I said, a, pr a pretty good day. And uh, we're looking to parlay that into some, some success here on Tuesday. So uh, if you want to purchase the picks, again, you can go to t3handicapping.weebly.com. You'll get the pick sheet and the race summaries. The race summaries are what you're seeing right over here on the right-hand side. You'll get all that for just $2. So um, you can go through and do a secure checkout on there, and then you will have access to the digital download for that. Um, I will update the product on that digital download uh, to, re um, to reflect once scratches have come in as well. So uh, you can download it once uh, to do your early handicapping and then download it again once um, I've had a chance to update it uh, and get the uh, the early scratches out. Usually, uh, if it's a 125 central post time, um, usually sometime around one o'clock is a safe time to get in there um, and get the update. Usually by then it's it's almost assuredly been completed. So let's jump into then Tuesday's uh, races and see what we have in store. I'll go over here and I'll grab my Tuesday card. So here you can see on our pick sheet, we do have nine thoroughbred races and, and pre-scratches. We do have um, a number of races that include what I would consider, um, you know, good choices for um, our best bets. Now, what you will notice is that our longest price on the board is Finnick the Fierce at nine to two. Um, outside of that, everybody's pretty much inside of two to one. I guess we have a seven to two shot here in Sky Liberty. Uh, it looks like it's going to be a fairly chalky day 
um, just from looking at things from afar. Now, again, as we start to see track profiles and things like that, that could change. But it does seem like a day where you can lean pretty heavily on some of the well-backed horses. So let's jump into it and see what we have here. Uh, race number one, we're going uh, class level nine, so pretty good. Eight furlongs on the dirt. Um, and we've got wildcard Prado here at uh, 0.8, so four to five, basically. Um, and you can see why that is. Has the top speed rating, second best stamina, top class, third in jockey trainer, but not by much. Record at the distance is third, does not factor in race flow, um, but does in form, is third in pace, and is tops in rating. Um, when we look over here at the grid, we can see uh, that we've got situations where it's speed, class, um, and form are the top three. But again, this one is very competitive throughout. I think as I'm looking at this one, I know I've got a moderate pace. I think I'm going to be very inclined to just go with a straight exact, a 3-4. Um, that to me seems like maybe the way to go. The two is kind of interesting with that stamina play and also may get the best of the race flow. I just don't know if there's going to be enough speed there. Um, so I'm not sure how much I'll actually use the, the grid here, but certainly if you trust uh, the 3-2 Two, three, four, and then the three, four, two, four, three. Um, if you want to play this number here, you're going to be in good shape and, and should be able to cash a ticket um, if it hits. But I'm going to be using the three pretty heavily here. I know it's not creative, but sometimes it's about cashing tickets or surviving to the next leg if you're a horizontal player as well. I think that's important too. Um, here we have Fallen Empire, who is a, a top selection paired with Sag Harbor as well. Um, Kosher Cowboy comes in in third. Um, I definitely want to use Kosher Cowboy. A B grade on a horse that's 10 to 1 um, is one that I want to use. This is a class level 11, so still um, better than most of the races at, at uh, Indiana Grand. Um, we've got five and a half furlongs on the dirt, and it looks to be a moderate pace, so I'm going to want horses uh, that can at least be there. Kosher Cowboy looks like uh, potentially could be one of the pace presences, if not Fallen Empire. So those two could go out to the front. At odds of 10 to 1, I tend to think Kosher Cowboy may be a little bit more brave um, in trying to get out there and steal it on the front end. And then you definitely have to use the four. So I'm going to be pretty heavily through the two, four, and five here. Again, I know that's nothing creative. Uh, it may end up being a key situation where I'll just key the value horse. So uh, two, four with five, and then just box it forwards and backwards. The reality is if it goes two, four in this situation, which it very well could, they seem like the two best, but the five seems interesting enough to me. And so I'm going to key that five, and I'm going to see if I can maybe hit a price. Um, if not, I'm out you know, a couple of bucks, but, um, if I'm able to hit it, especially with that five shot on top, uh, this could be a really profitable race for me. Moving on to the third race, uh, class level 22. So now we're getting into the bottom of the barrel here. Um, in this race, I'm going to go against a little eccentric, um, a little eccentric for being an even money favorite does not show up well on any of my metrics. Um, particularly one of the things that I look for is if a horse is going to be um, in a low level race like this, I like to see what their class level rates out to. What are, what are they looking like? Um, if I see a big change, if they're in first and I see a big change between the first place horse and the second place horse, then that might suggest to me that, you know, this horse is just bottoming out the class ladder and they should be just fine here. I don't see that in this one. So I'm actually going to take a firm stand against. I'm going to play uh, Sky Liberty. We've got a moderate pace. This one looks like, uh, at least on paper, it could have the best pace scenario. The seven, although an S type also um, shows some good early speed numbers and could be competitive there. I think the other one that you might see is Go Rodney. But what you're starting to also see then is our top three pace horses are just the three horses that have established run style. So you have to kind of take that with a grain of salt. But I like five, seven, and three as sort of my options here. Um, and then just take my chances against the number two. Uh, as you can see from the grid, the only place the two really shows up is in the race flow. Uh, and so I'm feeling fairly confident that I can go against that one. Um, for me, it's going to be five, seven, and then I'll kind of look maybe either the three or the four. I'm not exactly sure which direction I'll go there. Um, I like the four in that it shows up in multiple boxes in the grid, but obviously the three rates out as the next best horse and gets a B letter grade. Um, according to the, uh, the, the, um, rating system, the letter grades though, uh, Sky Liberty would be a horse that you could look to single in this spot. 
we'll, it'll be interesting to see if those uh, odds hold as we go into the actual race. Moving on to race number four, it's a class level 10, going eight furlongs distance, uh, a distance of eight furlongs on the dirt. Um, and this is going to be a moderate pace once again. And so I'm going to be looking for some of those uh, front running types. Uh, as I look at this, it's pretty clear to me that the five stands out above everybody else. Uh, April's No Fool comes in with the best form rating, the best pace rating, the best overall rating. Um, it's the class of the field by a significant margin. It's got the stamina. It's tied for tops in speed. Um, to me, this is a situation where if the five wins, I'll move on. I'll probably be joined by a number of you, but um, but at least I'll be able to move forward. Um, if somebody else wins, I don't have a real creative uh, opinion. Maybe mint chocolate chip at 10 to 1. Um, but that's a hope and a pray. And, and I guess I'd rather just go thin with a single. Um, maybe play a small double through mint chocolate chip, but that's about it. Moving on to race number five, class level seven. So these are top quality horses for Indiana Grand. Distance of eight furlongs on the dirt. We are going um, a moderate pace here. It looks like it's going to be about an 18 out of 24. Uh, in this situation, again, I do have Finnick the Fierce grading out higher than everybody else. But you can see there's some numbers that kind of jump off the page at you. I think the four looks formidable. Um, I think the six looks interesting. The one is the obvious choice here just because of how everything is condensed towards the front. Um, but nothing's guaranteed. Uh, nevertheless, I do think I'm going to want to go really heavily through the one. Uh, when I look, I mean, contact tracing is the, you know, supposed to be the favorite. Um, and I can see that 90% at the distance, which is a positive um is a positive number, a decent speed figure. Uh, you're talking 90 versus 97. Um, so there's that piece of it. But other than that, I'm not terribly impressed by this horse. Uh, particularly, again, we look at class, you've got, you know, horses coming in at five, six, 6.8, and then seven. So there's a big gap back to, to where that horse is. So I think I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to play against the favorite here. That makes the five being singled much more palatable in that previous one. It also means that if I do play a small double, mint chocolate chip into even my top three contenders here, um, any of those are going to pay out significantly. So uh, taking a big stand against contact tracing here. Moving on to race number six, we've got a class level 14, so a fairly typical for Indiana Grand. Eight furlongs on the turf. We'll see if that persists um, or if they take it out for an, another day. Um, weather has been really good there. Today was sunshiny, 70 degrees, um, and it looks like it's going to be the same all the way through tomorrow's card, so I'm hoping we can get back on the turf. This one's going to be quick. Um, that might suggest that things are going to open up for somebody coming from the back. And that's why my top selection is going to be Copper King, who's a mid-pack type horse and has uh, four points clear of Buckets of Rain, uh, who gets an A grade as well. Those horses are at 6-1 to one and 8-1 to one respectively. I do think Link to Destiny is interesting and will sit in a good spot at 2.5-1. to one. Um when I have a spread of three horses and one of the horses at two and a half to one uh, or five to two, I'll typically, you know, kind of decide if I want to play that horse or not. In this case, because I'm playing so heavily against uh, the favorite in the previous race, uh, I don't think that should be a problem, horizontally speaking, to go against that. I do also think um, that Marv's Magic could be interesting if everything just absolutely falls apart. Um, could see that horse coming late. Uh, I'm just not sure if it will have enough kick, especially with Link to Destiny and Copper King getting a little bit better jump. But nevertheless, it's one to, to consider. You can see um, this is a race where I would say the grid can be really helpful because you've got, as of right now, 12 betting interests. Um, and you can see that the grid is kind of all over the map. Uh, what that suggests is this race is really wide open. And so any number of these combinations, 6-4, 6, four, six eight, 11, six, nine. Um, this might even be a great race to look at this sort of, uh, what I call the inverse or tertiary, uh, bet line. So, you know, a nine, four, two, you're talking 15 to one, eight to one and two and a half to one, um, for the nine, four, two, the eight, four, 10 would be eight to one, 
uh, two and a half to one and 20 to one. So if you can hit one of those exactas or if you can nail one of those tries, um, that could be a big payday for you in race number six. Uh, race number seven, we are also on the turf again, subject to, um, subject to them keeping these races on the turf. And we can see that this one has a New York kind of feel to it with a slow pace on the turf. We're going to just jog along. Uh, and I, to me, that's an interesting one because you can see that Jimmy Dan, the number two, came out to be the top rated horse here. But you can also see that Jimmy Dan uh, is a little bit slower running. This is one where I'm kind of inclined to use a horse that's got a little bit more early speed. And, you know, as I'm looking through this, I mean, somebody like a K Rules or even like Biggie or uh, Tempo Rubato. Um, as I'm looking at those horses, they may be interesting just because if the pace is going to be slow, I don't want a horse that's coming from five or six lengths out of it. Three to four I can live with, um, but if they're going to be coming from out of the clouds, that's going to be problematic. So um, for closers, I'm going to be looking for early speed on closers, which is not typically something that you, you necessarily pinpoint. Uh, but I think it's going to be important because if, if a horse at Indiana Grand, especially if there's some given the turf, if they give up too much ground to the leaders, it doesn't matter how much late kick they have, they're just not going to get there in time. So this is a race where I, I don't have a great handle. Once scratches happen, maybe I will have a better idea. Um, but for right now, I'm going to kind of blanket this field. I'm going to try and use as many as I can in my horizontal strategy. I'll have A and B uh, tickets, but I will have probably every single one of the C covered uh, as well. And, and again, with scratches, that may change. There may be clarity. But for right now, this one to me seems like a race that's going to be really wide open and being on the turf doesn't help. Moving on to race number eight, class level 17, five and a half furlongs on the dirt, moderate pace for this race. Um, and I've got two horses that to me really stand out above the rest. That's Malibu Classic at eight to one. I really like this horse. Um, bold business, uh, bold busyness is one that uh, is definitely going to um, probably take some money, uh, is a favorite and is well deserving, but at the same time is going to be coming from that mid pack. And so I like that. Uh, potentially the nine could have that best early pace and, and could get the best of the race flow here and carry it uh, beyond what I think is a more talented runner in the number three. I will use both, but I will be rooting heavily for the nine. The nine post position was extremely successful yesterday. At least three or four winners uh, come out of Indiana Grand post number nine. So um, that, that at least seems to be working in this horse's favor at a decent price, uh, but we will definitely use the three and the nine. May include the five as well, just because it will be forwardly placed and does get a B minus, but, um, but definitely the three nine stand out as the top two. And then coming into our last race, this is going to be a slow one. Um, and you've got Mo Heat, who comes out as my top selection, uh, is well clear. Um, and you can see this one is dominant in the, um, in the ratings, just up and down the line. Um, you know, as I'm looking down at my other options, you can see almost every horse is in with a chance to win in this race. Um, everybody gets a grade except for the, the number three horse. Uh, certainly Candy Curl and Alpine Ghost are interesting at those prices. The only problem is the price is a little deceiving. Because Mojit is such a low price in this race, you've got Candy Girl and Alpine uh, Ghost who look good at six to one and eight to one. But when you really look at what those prices are, it's third choice and fourth choice. So um, the value in horizontals may not be quite as good as you would get just playing in the wind pools there. I do think if I was going to play somebody else, I would play Alpine Ghost. I do recognize that this is a slow pace and I'm asking a horse to come from out of it, which is why if I could use Candy Curl and Alpine Ghost together, I would. Um, but I think if I did that, I'd have to say Mohit's going to lose. Um, and honestly, depending on where I'm at at the end of the day, that might be something that I'm willing to take a shot at, especially if I'm on house money, just to say, look, this is not a great level of horse. No horse should be favored under even money. That's just bad value. I'm going to see if I can beat it and you know, hope that one of the two other really likely horses come in. If they do, I've not only beaten the favorite, but I've also beaten Loot the Moon, which would be the second choice. Um, and so maybe I can maybe I can hit it there. If Mohit is a super heavy favorite, um, then it might be a situation where I include Loot the Moon and and pretty much feel like if Mohit doesn't fire, then I'm gonna uh, take things down. So that's kind of how I'm gonna play that last one. Um, it does seem like a deserving favorite, and I don't like to play against best bets. Um, 
but the price just may be too short on that one. So it may be either a play against or it might just have to be a pass race. So uh, that concludes the Tuesday card, the nine race thoroughbred portion. There is a quarter horse race after that, maybe one or maybe two. I can't remember off the top of my head, but that concludes the uh, the thoroughbred portion. Again, if you want to purchase the products, uh, especially after scratches, I think a lot of uh, these uh, graphs here. The race summary sheets can be really helpful after scratches. Um, it's just $2 uh, for the card. So um, if you want to get those once the scratches come out, you can go to my website, t3handicapping.weebly.com um, and go ahead and purchase the Tuesday package, which will be Indiana Grand, both the pick sheet on page one um, and then all of the subsequent race summaries. Don't forget to check back on Wednesday for Indiana Grand, as well as the ability to purchase the Keeneland uh, package as well. So uh, good luck to you on your Tuesday at Indiana Grand. I hope you cash lots of tickets, and thank you for your continued support of T3 Handicapping.